More than 40 years ago, the Voyager space probe, exploring the vicinity of Jupiter, took the first photographs of the bright yellow surface of one of the moons of the giant planet Io, the most volcanically active world in the solar system, with hundreds of volcanoes, some of which erupt lava fountains up to 200 kilometers high and higher. Even then, it was clear that this was an extraordinary, ever-changing world. Besides, it was the Voyager that, for the first time, managed to document Jupiter's radiation belt, which passes right across the line of Io's orbit. It is entirely because of such unfortunate positioning that the level of radiation from the giant planet on its nearest satellite is 1,000 times stronger than the level of radiation on the Earth's surface, which makes finding a person on Io simply impossible. Or possible, but not for long. And ill. Thanks to the data collected by spacecraft such as Voyager 1 and 2, Galileo and New Horizons, we have learned a great deal. But at this very moment, the Juno spacecraft is there, and its data has tremendously expanded our understanding of this hellish place. In fact, Io is slightly larger than our Earth's moon, a mere 5%, and orbits at a distance of just over 400,000 kilometers from Jupiter. This satellite is always pointed at one in the same side of its planet, making a complete revolution around it in 42.5 hours. But the most unusual and exciting thing that the Juno probe registered on the moon of Io was its surface. The tremendous quantity of heat inside the moon, which keeps most of its subsurface crust in a liquid form, seeks any accessible outlet to the surface in order to relieve the pressure. As such, Io's surface is constantly regenerating itself, filling any impact craters with lakes of molten lava. It is assumed that the composition of this material is predominantly molten sulfur, its compounds and silicate rock, which better accounts for an apparent temperature which may be too high. Sulfur dioxide, incidentally, is the primary component of the satellite's atmosphere. Although it is so extremely thin and low in density that, in fact, it is more correctly referred to as an exosphere, which is filled with volcanic gases. The volcanic atmospheric discharges do not contain water and water steam. Thus, being without water, Io significantly differs from the other satellites of Jupiter, the colder Galilean moons. Io's colorful and bright surface appearance is the result of the rigorous work of the volcanoes, which emit various substances in the form of sulfur, dioxide, and silicates. A frosting of sulfur dioxide coats much of the moon's surface, coloring its regions white or gray. In many of the regions, sulfur is also visible due to its yellow and yellow-green color. At mid and high latitudes, Radiation is usually broken down by the stable, octatomic cyclic molecules of sulfur, as a result of which, Io's polar regions are colored in a reddish-brown tint. There are no less than 400 formidable volcanoes on Io, and moreover, about 150 can be active at the same time, generating veritable chaos on the surface. Flows of basaltic lava are a common sight in this place, Magma bursts forth onto the surface through inclines on the bottom of pateras, which are formations with a flat bottom and steep walls, or through the cracks in the flat bottoms, creating numerous wide lava flows. During exceptionally large eruptions, such lava flows can stretch for hundreds of kilometers. As a result of volcanic activity, sulfur dioxide in the form of gas and silicate matter in the form of ash rise to a height of up to 200 kilometers into outer space in the form of a kind of radiation umbrella. And after falling, they color the region red, black, and white. One of the largest volcanic depressions on Io is Loki Patera. With a diameter of 250 kilometers, it is partially filled with molten lava and covered with a hardened thin crust. Similar lakes are directly connected with the magma reservoir located below them. And since the solidified lava is denser than the molten lava below, this crust can sink, increasing the thermal emissions of the volcano. During an eruption, 
The wave from the sinking crust spreads across the Patera at a rate of about 1 kilometer in 12 hours, until the entire lake is again crusted over. Besides volcanoes, there are also mountains on Io that were formed due to the collisions of layers of the lithosphere, the satellite's hard crust. In those places where stone slabs press heavily against each other, massive cliffs have risen from the depths in exactly the same way that mountains appeared on our Earth. Apart from mountains and volcanoes, Io's surface appears to be very smooth, with only a few meteorite impact craters on it. Another amazing characteristic of Io is the dunes, ribbon-like formations that are visible near the volcano Prometheus. It is believed that the hot lava erupting from volcanoes comes into contact with patches of frozen sulfur dioxide and causes it to release heat as a gas. It then expands violently, creating a temporary wind on the surface, enough to throw grains in the form of sand and create dunes. The space probe Juno made the first of nine flights to Io that are planned for the next two years. During two of these flybys, the device will be able to fly to a very close distance from this satellite of Jupiter, about 1,500 kilometers. The spacecraft will make these two close flybys of Io on December 30th, 2023 and February 3rd, 2024. At that time, Juno will study how volcanic eruptions interact with Jupiter's powerful magnetic field and influence the occurrence of polar aurora borealises. Io is arguably one of the most captivating and extraordinary moons of which we know. In addition to being the fourth largest moon in the solar system, it is also the densest of those known. Its bright, multicolored surface is the most volcanically active in the solar system. <laughs>